Bronco, darling. Wake up, darling. Oh, what's, what's happening? Are we being raided? No, that's the one thing we've still got to look forward to. Come on, baby, sit up and have some nice bricky wicky. Huh? Did we? No, darling. I wasn't thinking of that for once. What I was struggling to say was, prop me up, darling. I know you're not allowed to prompt the contestants, but was last night as bad as I remember? Worse. Oh. We didn't do very well, yes? Correct in the first part. Cleaned out? You are correct in the second part. You've just won yourself a fabulous weekend with no expenses paid in glamorous Notting Hill Gate. Have some coffee. Never has a house lost so much so consistently to so few. Elise is up here, though, darling. What now? Meaning me? Don't worry, I'll be all right. There's always a spot for me in the south of France with dear old Bertie. Bonjour, tristesse, and all that. I can always close my eyes and think of England. What about you? I'll take the bottles back and collect the pennies on the empties. Not to worry. Something always turns up. Like me? No. Not quite like you. It's a pity this isn't deductible. We'd make a fortune. I'll go and run your bath for you. You ring me later and find out. Bye. Mm. Run some more hot in for me, will you? I'm your husband, not your bloody Batman, you know. There is such a word as please. Please? Oh, poor Rupert Bear. He's all upset. Now say you're sorry like a good little bear. your porridge for this week. Who sent you your lovely book? Why do I have to answer all the questions, sir? I might ask you who's on the telephone just now. Well, ask me, darling. I might even tell you. You want it always, don't you? I just face facts, darling. The war's been over a long time. Nothing's rationed anymore. There's plenty to go round. I had a bloody good war. Yes. Perhaps you ought to go off somewhere and find yourself another one. You never know. You might get a mention in my dispatches again.
Yes? Oh. You're in. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Boyle. I've been waiting for you to come in. You know, you've had callers this afternoon, two gentlemen. Oh, who was it? Did they say? No, never left no name. Oh, I expect they'll call again. Yes, they said they'd be back. Probably something in connection with the magazine. Didn't look like no church magazine to me, Father. Looked more like the police, Father. Oh. I expect it will sort itself out. Uh, most grateful, Mrs. Boyle. Redcliffe Gardens. Thank you, sir. Don't tip him. I took care of it. You took care of me, too. I'll call you, baby. Martin, darling, is that you? Who are you expecting? Where did this come from? I don't know, darling. I haven't opened it, have I? I must have killed you. I'll get you some breakfast. No, I had breakfast. Well, don't just stand there. If you've got something to say, say it. You found the paradise, right? And they said I'd left. Well, I went to a party. A very dull party. But I think I'm getting my job back, so you better dust off the piano and I'll start practicing again. Okay? That satisfy you? I didn't say anything, did I? No, you're improving. Martin. Darling, don't be too awful to me. It's only because I love you so much. Well, I'll be especially nice to you this afternoon. Let you buy me a present. We'll have dinner together? Yeah, we'll have dinner together. It's not from your wife, is it? Running her in. Which one? It's not ostentatious, is it? No, no, not for you, no. What's that one's gimmick? Oh, the little, uh, she sings. She's a singer. Just made her first recording. On extended play, no doubt. Well, what's your other problem, Dad? Uh, no problem. Just got a little job for you. Same as last time. Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, I did it once to help you out, but it's taken quite a risk. Well... I could up the ante a bit, maybe. Another five. Don't rupture yourself, will you? I might be interested in 25. Do me a favor. That's a favor. Oh, it's time. Uh. It's in the boat.
How do you want it fixed this time? Just lengthen the odds a bit, like 110 to 1, with a 10% jab pop. You sure that's enough? Don't they ever twig it? No, they love punishment. People are greedy, didn't you know? Have it ready for tonight. Hey, I'll, uh, I'll take that phone number when you're ready for a trade-in, you know. You couldn't even afford a down payment. <laughs> okay, that's it. Go take a rub down, huh? Mr. Stevens. I told you not to come here. Yeah, well, the necessity knows no manners, as they say. I've got nothing for you anyway. I told you last time that's the lot. Things have been very slack. Yeah, I know. I know. It's the same for everybody. Uh, one gets through it so quickly, especially if one has a hobby. I mean, they say girls are expensive enough, but, well, it takes all sorts to make a world. When can I expect something, then? I told you I haven't got the money. Yeah, and the next week, should we say? But don't leave it any later. We want to keep everything nice and friendly. I'll look in again, then. I'll send it to you if I get any. No, no. I prefer the personal touch. I'll call in. You'll get it, don't worry. I've got every confidence in you. What's the matter with you? Do you want to catch cold? Get on there and get a blanket on. What's this like then? Any good? No idea. I haven't started it yet. The last one you lent me wasn't much. Nothing happened, did it? I mean, I didn't understand half of it. What are them two blokes up to then? I mean, if you've got to read a book like, I like them others. You know, plenty of thrills and that in them. Well, there are thrills and thrills. On the table. Let me see those x ray plates again, nurse. Nurse. I'm sorry, Doctor. The plates. Yes. Try and concentrate, nurse. You're new here, aren't you? Yes, sir. Well, one thing to learn at St. Matthews, we never let emotion get the upper hand. There. There's the patch. There. It's spreading too. Frank, you there? Oh, you are. Look at him, lapping it up. What's happening tonight, Daddy? Hmm? What's happening on there? Mm, is the little girl still in the iron lug, is she? Yes, okay. and they're all dying. Mm, <laughs> Have some gravy. Only one Doctor day. came today. Operation. Thought Daddy was looking Guthrie. wonderful. Says he can go on for years the way he's looked <laughs> after. Of course, he said he'd <laughs> never have lasted as long as he has uh, if he'd been put away. Really? Yes. You're a miracle, Mrs. Weaver. A miracture. Oh, very nice to talk no, to the doctor was. Well, I said, Frank wouldn't you know, think well, of I having Daddy put into her home after all he's done for us. Giving us the business and all that. Oh, he looked at my veins today. So said, I'll never get any better till I get off my feet more. Well, there was something I wanted to tell you. What was it? Oh, yes, Mr. Wilson at the garage. His son, you know the one, the young one. Raymond was his name. No, that's not his name. The other one, what was married to, you know, the one that was married to the girl that used to do my hair. You remember, they said the baby wasn't his. Well, according to everyone, Come on, chaps. We haven't got any time to lose. Good luck, I beg of you. Cooperative party, this way, please. Do I say thank you to anybody? No hosts? 
Oh, well, well, the liquor's genuine anyway. I know you, don't I? I don't think so. You a member of the Paradise Club? The what club? Paradise. Not to my knowledge. Well, they've spelt the name right anyway. Found yours yet? Uh, yes. Well, we may as well swap cards, save intros. No, I think I'll... Uh... You're not leaving already, I hope. You'll miss a rather good lunch. Uh, just the hat and the umbrella, please. Well, good morning, gentlemen. You've all found out where you're sitting, I take it. Yes. So, uh, shall we? Good. Over there, Rupert. That's right. Oh, one absentee, I see. Well, we won't wait. I chose the menu with rather more than usual care. It'd be a pity to spoil it for one defaulter. What's it? Oh, good man, you found some. Excellent. Uh, did you have any trouble parking? I, um, I didn't come by car. Uh, very sensible. Mm. This is good. Absolutely at peak. Oh, don't you agree? I don't drink. Oh, no, of course not. I forgot. Well, do start, gentlemen. Good God Almighty. This is the right place, the cooperative whatnot thing? Yes, do come in. We were just about to begin without you. Oh, I took the wrong turning, and not for the first time. Found myself in a room full of trade unionists cooking up the next wage claim. All Tories, of course. Didn't take to me at all. Ah, that's better. What is it? Hmm, fair enough. The 52 is all gone, I suppose. Enjoy your meal, gentlemen. You know the old saying, if a rich man eat when you will, if a poor man, when you can. <laughs> See, we are not disturbed. Leave it to me, sir. Well, now, gentlemen, I think the first thing for me to do is to establish my good faith. You'll find these contain the missing halves of the five-pound notes. Captain Porthill, Captain Mycroft, Lieutenant Lexi, Major Rutland Smith, Captain Weaver, Captain Stevens, Major Race. Uh, don't bother to thank me, gentlemen. Purely a business transaction. Be a bit difficult to thank you anyway, old darling. Since I don't know your name. Didn't I sign the letters? How very careful of me. Well, I've no objections now. I don't think my name's Hyde. J. G. N. Hyde. What's the J stand for? Jekyll. Oh, that's a thought, isn't it? Mr. Hyde, Corporal, Sergeant. Let's just leave it that I outrank you. The book, gentlemen. I'd like your opinions on it. Uh, you've all read it, I take it. I'm afraid I didn't, though, darling. Any particular reason why not, Major? I never read books from strange men. Well, then, a very brief pressy for the Major's benefit. An American thriller with the germ of a good, almost brilliant idea about a group of single-minded men who plan and execute a particularly daring bank robbery, right? Now, any criticisms as to the way the robbery was organized? You asking me? Well, I thought it was quite original. That's all? Yes, that's all. Weaver. Uh, I think I agree with him. I'd like to read it again, quietly. I see. Stevens. Oh, I... I enjoyed it. A bit far-fetched, perhaps. You couldn't see it happening in real life? Oh, I... I wouldn't go as far as that. Life's always surprising me. But didn't it excite any of you? Mycroft? I was held by it, yes. Nothing more? I mean, weren't you actually excited? Well, I can't say I was. I prefer more subtle things, really. But didn't it give any of you any ideas? It gave me a headache. I read it in bed. 
Yes, but what about the basic idea? The way the robbery was conceived like a textbook military campaign. Didn't that fire your imaginations? Apparently not, old darling. Well, you disappoint me, gentlemen. I expected more of you. I felt sure that at the very least, the idea of making easy money would appeal to all of you. What makes you so sure of that? Oh, come now. You're all crooks, aren't you? Of one kind or another. Wouldn't you agree with that, Padre? Not staying here and being insulted? Oh, I would if I were you. After all, we are all men of the world. So an officer who was cashiered for gross indecency in a public place, the Botanical Gardens, Tunbridge Wells, wasn't it? Needn't feel squeamish. And then, of course, you took to the old dog collar racket. What denomination are you at the moment? Church of England, isn't it? Oh, no, no. No, that stopped at Bristol, didn't it, at the Assizes? I felt the judge went a bit far myself. Still, you're here. And I'm sure you're going to stay. You seem amused, Mr. Lexi. Is it a joke we can all share? Well, you tell me. Well, I can't tell you the same joke, I'm afraid, but uh, try this one. It has a certain charm. Berlin, 1945. Lieutenant Edward Lexi, Royal Corps of Signals, kicked out for giving information to the Russians. The joke being that you did it for money, as always, not principles. Not funny? Bit nearer the knuckle, perhaps? Depends whose finger's on the trigger, doesn't it, Captain Porthill? Yours was in Cyprus when you were cashier for shooting Eoka suspects. He's still using those nimble fingers, though, playing the piano in cheap nightclubs and extracting pocket money from middle-aged ladies for services courageously rendered. Race. Ex-major race. With his customary foresight in these matters, which did him and at the same time kept him from justice, resigned his commission just before a flourishing black market ring was uncovered in post-war Hamburg. Decent gesture, though. The sake of the regiment and all that. Reading will tell, you know. Friend Stevens. One time fascist backroom boy, Mosley speaks and all that. Saw the light just in time and was made an officer and a gentleman. Unfortunately, he couldn't quite behave like one. The Sunday newspapers had a field day. There's nothing the British public likes better than catching the odd men out. Captain Weaver, a sad case but not demanding too much sympathy for the captain. Save your tears for the men who died as a result of his gross negligence. Four, weren't there? Members of a bomb disposal squad acting under Captain Weaver's orders while he was acting under the influence. And of course, gallant Major Hyphenated Smith, we mustn't forget you. You always wanted to die with your boots clean, didn't you, Rupert? But marriage changed all that. His wife's money bought him out after she'd settled some embarrassing mess bills. However, gratitude, as Nurse Cavell omitted to add, is not enough. And where do I fit in? Well, I'm ashamed to say that I have the advantage over you gentlemen. My criminal career is just about to blossom. You'll find nothing on me, <laughs> not a blemish. I served my country well as a regular soldier and was suitably rewarded after 25 years by being declared redundant. Now, don't let's kid ourselves any longer. This was not intended to be a book of the month club lunch. I brought you all together because I have a certain proposition to make. Now, what do we all have in common, apart from an urgent need for funds? We were all trained at great public expense to do certain things with the utmost efficiency, such as 
how to kill a man with the minimum effort and other minor arts and crafts which, while frowned upon in peacetime, are acclaimed in times of war. Well, I've got a social conscience, and I think it's a crying shame for so much public money to be wasted. I intend to put it to some practical peacetime use. Now then, the main character in this book knew just where to lay his hands on the various experts to do the jobs he wanted. Well, you are my experts. You were all specialists in your own fields, and with your cooperation, I intend to rob a bank myself. And the pay, gentlemen, 100,000 pounds each. That's $280,000. A million, 100,000 Deutschmarks, over a hundred million francs, if any of you are thinking of emigrating, and it could be more. How do you know? Have you counted it already? How do I know? How did I arrive at all of you? Because I make sure of all my facts before I move. I put in a good deal of time and money on this project. I'm giving you the benefit of both. And which bank have you in mind? That's restricted at the moment. And this gentleman is as far as I'm prepared to go for the time being. Think it over carefully. I hope no one will try to be clever. Such a waste of time. I shall deny everything and a year's work will go for nothing. It could be a year well spent for all of us. How do we contact you? I'll do the contacting. I'll let you know when and where we meet again. Same terms? But of course, Mr. Lexi. Oh, do drink up while it lasts. Everything's paid for and the room's yours till four. Good afternoon, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. Well, speaking purely personally, old darlings, I thought that was a bloody good lunch. I do hope he hasn't the national provincial in mind. They're being awfully decent to me at the moment. There's potholes filled in, old darling. Bloody little room, Miss Springs. I had them dug especially for you. Sorry if I went around the houses this afternoon. Very boring for you. Why, was it as obvious as all that? I wouldn't say obvious, exactly. Well, I'm not very good at it, you see. Probably because I'm usually the one who's followed. Never mind. You gave me a certain academic thrill. It was a seven-to-one shot, but my money was on you from the start. Uh, you'd like a drink, I take it, before you go back to the YMCA? Thank you very much. The butler's night off. I live alone. You barely have it to live alone now, darling. Guess one a complex. Exactly, Mrs. Beaton, old darling. Oh, one can't be bothered cooking for oneself. I have a good clean-up about once a month. Yes. The point is, it's home. Do you mind? I'm quite good at this. It's the way I was brought up. Mummy thought the world of me. Um, so, please. Don't think you have to. Believe it or not, this is the one chore I missed in the army. And what rank did they kick you out with, by the way? I made half colonel. Still, I gather you don't intend to exactly fade away. Let me um, tell you about me, though. Yes, do. Well, I'm the careful type. Came to the old shooting match without a scratch. Oh, bloke's cute to stand beside me at Dunkirk. You're not luck. 
I just took care. Rule one, ask first, be a hero later. So I'm asking, why should you want to lead me to the biggest amount of loot I've ever heard of? Because you're one of the experts I need. To be successful, an army has to be mobile. That means a good transport officer. You used to be as good as they come. Oh, this is still got egg on it. Oh, I'm so sorry. And what about the others? Well, I'm glad you asked me that. What did you think of them, by the way? Well, not nature's nobleman, perhaps. No, but as a team, all hands selected. I wasn't exactly idle during my last few months at the war office. You'd be surprised what a little research in the files brought to the surface. No, not surprised, because you came floating up. Floating? I got everything I wanted. Weaver, genius with explosives. Lexi, the radio king. Mycroft, absolutely first-class quartermaster. And the other three, good trained soldiers, ruthless if need be. And what's your speciality? I synchronize the watches. And go over the top first? I should be there on the day. Well, remember rule two, old darling. Never get ahead of the mob. They're liable to shoot you in the ass. What you need is someone to protect your interests. Yes, that had occurred to me too. But before you suggest yourself for the job, I ought to mention one thing. Everybody gets the same share. Well, roughly, anyway. No. I intend to get away with this. And the one sure way to disaster is for somebody to get greedy. So it's equal shares for all. Including you? Of course. Do you still want to be considered? Well, you haven't yet told me how you hope to get away with it. That comes later, when we've reached an agreement. As you say, one has to proceed carefully. I was at Dunkirk, too. Yes, but I bet you didn't get away on the first boat like me. Of course, there's always the possibility, you're ugly though it may sound, that um, I might spill the beans if we don't come to an agreement. And you said you weren't nasty. Oh, I'm not. It's just the way my mind works sometimes, you know, in vicious circles. Yes, but you're not the informer type. I'm sure that we can find a mutually acceptable solution. I tell you what, let's have something to eat and we'll talk about it. Or two meals in one day. You're spoiling me. All my men loved me. Well? In theory, I like it. It's a certain old world charm. But it'll never work. Why not? Because you can't pull a stunt like that in this country. Oh, I know they get away with it in the States. And the first ones to try it here will get away with it too. Think of it as a full-scale military operation. What chance has a bunch of ordinary civilians got against a trained, armed, and disciplined military unit? You are a soldier, man. You ought to know. <laughs> <laughs> you know we really are a marvelous nation, aren't we? In any crisis, we always produce the right man for the job, even though it's the wrong job. All right? I'm sold. I'll sign on for the duration. On my terms, equal shares for all. Well, if you insist on this socialistic nonsense, yes. You're losing a friend, but gaining a second in command. I'll settle for that. Oh, let's leave the dishes. Uh, do you want to stay the night? Why not? Well, oh, move in now if it comes to that. Fine. Good. Did you bring any gear with you? Yes, it's always prepared. You'd be surprised when my caravan is rested. Well, I'll just pop out of the car, darling. Look, do you mind not using that sickening expression? Oh, what's that? Call me Hyde, Norman, or Colonel, if you like, but for heaven's sake, drop that old darling stuff. All right, old dear. Sorry, Colonel. One gets into terrible habits of the YMCA. Is that your wife? Yes. Is she dead? No, no, I regret to say the bitch is still going strong. <laughs> Very smart. I shall miss the old rose, though. Yeah, so will I. But she didn't fit the part. Well, we mustn't keep them waiting. Cap your royal again? Not this time. We're at war now. Well, it was dancing principal and I was... Charming. Can I help you? We've got this room until three. Isn't this babes in the woods? 
No, we're rehearsing Journey's End. Oh. So sorry. Well, I mean, where do we go? I haven't the faintest idea. You'd better sort that out with the secretary. The asking. Some people. Shall we start uh, with the second act? I'm well, sorry about that. Well, now, gentlemen, if you will all look at page 20. Let me say how delighted I am to see you all again, gentlemen. Your presence here restores my basic disbelief in the goodness of human nature. So I think perhaps the time has come to dispel any further doubts that you may have. The babes in the wood permitting. Absolutely. Fabulous idea. Fabulous. I don't think it's a great idea. Yeah, I have to admit it is. A bit that appeals to me. What a concept. You think it's got a chance. Oh, bloody marvellous. I can't miss. Joe, yes. Be like the old days. What do you think? Yeah, give it a try. Are you ready to vote on it? How about you, Padre? Yes, I feel a certain calling towards it. Weaver. Uh, Me too. Stevens. I'm for it. Splendid. Well, thank you for your support, gentlemen. Now, our immediate plan is as follows. After dismissal here, I suggest we disperse and you take tender farewells of your nearest and dearest and then report to this address at 1800 hours tomorrow and come prepared for a long stay. Decent accommodation, of course, sir, as befits officers and uh, gentlemen. Well, the food will be good and the prospects unlimited. Of course, it's not goodbye, darling. I mean, after all, we've uh, only just been introduced. It's just that I'm onto a good thing. It's a big opportunity for me, which I hope you'll share. this one on the house. I'm just passing through myself. Excellent. Well, it's good to see you all on parade. Now, if you'll follow me, gentlemen, I'll show you to your quarters. And some of you will have to double up, I'm afraid. But we must all make sacrifices at times like these. Oh, by the way, I want to appoint two admin officers. Uh, Captain Mycroft, I propose making you quartermaster. Oh, thank you, sir. And, of course, we shall have to have an adjutant. Um, Major Race is a senior man, I think. Will accept, Race? Well, if you insist. Right, gentlemen. Weaver and Port Hill in here. Keep an eye on him, Port Hill. Don't let him sneak any liquor in. Excuse me. Mycroft and Rutland Smith in here. No noise at night now while Christopher Mycroft saying his prayers. Mr. Lexi, you're along here. Ah, good. Uh, on my own, eh? No, with Stevens. Major Race, you're through there. Thank you. I feel at home already. Like being back at school, huh? I sincerely hope not. Can I have you all out here again, please? There are just one or two other things. The uh, usual offices are down there to the right. I've posted various duty roasters for fatigues, etc., and I should like them strictly observed. You will make your own beds and be responsible for your own laundry. And no women in the rooms after ten, I presume? Or before. Now, regards discipline. Where they apply, Queen's regulations will be enforced. Any minor breaches will be punished by a fine of £100 to be deducted from the final payout. Major or repeated offences by a fine of 500 pounds. Well, I think that's all for the time being, gentlemen. Dinner is at 20 hundred hours, followed by our first lecture in the basement. Could you spare a moment, Major? Ooh. I hope you'll get out, Chuck. Operation right, Golden Fleece, I like that. Oh, cookhouse duties and fatigues, I don't care for that. I see you and I washing up tonight. Ah, delightful. Well, I'm cooking lunch tomorrow. Oh, press on, I wonder what time lights are out in the dorm. 
I don't know about you lot, but uh, I'm going to keep my lights on all night. You may smoke if you wish, gentlemen. We are gathered here to discuss phase one of the operation. Now, I don't have to tell you that as a general rule, banks take very good care of people's money. They are not going to give it to us, um, so we shall have to take it. Uh, but to take it, we shall need arms. And the sort of arms we need are not sold over the counter. However, I have every confidence that whatever we require will be supplied by our late employer. Do you mean the army, sir? Uh, first slide, please, Major. Certainly, Colonel. I'm so sorry. That comes in the second lecture, How to Live Off the Countryside. <laughs> ah, that's better. Gentlemen, you're now looking at our source of supply, the Army Command Training Center at Malverton in Dorset, to which we will shortly be paying a surprise visit. Oh, by the way, just one other little detail. When we leave our card, we shall have to provide the authorities with a scapegoat. In this case, I'm relying on the British character. We British will always give the Germans, the Russians, the Japanese, or even the Egyptians the benefit of the doubt, but never the Irish. So, uh, throughout this exercise, if we use our accents judiciously, the IRA will get the credit and the blame. <laughs> Have a fag, sir. Don't let the other ranks see you nervous. Oh, cut it out, Marty. First training. Yeah? Who, sir? Area Command. I, I've got the G2 on the line for your commanding officer. Something wrong with your line? Here, the old man's out, isn't he? Yes. He's gone out of town shopping with his missus. Well, I've got a call for him. Well, put it through to the adjutant. Clot. Uh, just trying to find him, sir. Well, hurry it up. You big head. Hello, Captain Saunders. Hello. I've got the G2 on yeah? the line, sir. Who, man? Speak up. Uh, the G2, sir. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'd better take it. Putting you through, sir. Yeah, who, who am I speaking to? Captain Saunders. Well, I wanted your commanding officer, my dear fellow. Not there. Oh, that's most unfortunate. Look, I've got a bit of bad news for you, I'm afraid. Uh, yes, the, the new air air commander's on his way down for a surprise visit. Someone's been complaining about the food. Complaint about the food? Well, well no, no, I don't. Yeah. Well, well, how do you think I ought to handle it, sir? Well, with kid gloves, you want my tip. <laughs> He's a ball of fire. Well, uh, put on some sort of a show. Yeah, the best I can do, I'm afraid. Yes, I'm well, sorry I couldn't give you longer notice. Thank you, sir. Well, we're very grateful to you, sir. Thank you. Goodbye. Wilkins, get my stuff. Hat, belt, everything. Then get Mr. Thomas and Mr. Shotter. No, forget that. I'll do that. You just get the stuff. Go on! Yes, sir. Hello, get me the orderly room. Get me the orderly room. The area commander's on his way here. There's been a complaint about the food. Now, we've got to get things organized. Right, leave it to me, sir. Paul, go with him, will you? Right. Your four guard turn out. Jimmy, don't stand there. Cut along to the switchboard. Try and locate the old man. Paul, what do you got for the men's tea? Fried, you say? Fried eggs, baked beans, chips, toast and tapioca. Yes. Can you change it? Not now, sir. It's all cute. Right. Rust up some soup. Give every man two eggs. Have you got any tinned fruit? So many officers mess, sir. Well, grab it. Put that on, too. Corporal! Two eggs? Mucking balloon gone up for some of us. It's a diabolical dead liberty, I'll tell you. Still tin fruit, eh? Oh, all right, that'll make all the difference. The bleeding stuff's been here since the Boer War. Come in. What's the matter with your webbing, Alphas? You're on a fizzer in the morning! Get 
me four to eight. Can't, sir. What do you mean, can't? Can't get a line, sir. We'll get the exchange, then. Can't get anything, sir. Here, Chunky, come on all outside. Get moving. I get stuffed. Get what? Get off that bed, Grogan. Get outside in your best pair of dress and boots. And jump to it, sir. Get up! Everything under control, sir. We hope. If I might make a suggestion, sir. Oh, yes, anything. What? Perhaps an early German to the mess and get in with the old liberal hospitality. Don't you worry, sir, Major. That's top of my list. Right, cigarettes out. Just enjoy it from here on. And don't forget, we carry the rank. Correction. I carry the rank. After me. <laughs> Don't go mad. Not the relief of Lady Smith. All right, Alphas. Wait for it. As you were. God! Turn up! Captain? Saunders, sir. Christie is my name. Colonel Wiley, Major Williams. Hello. Sir. I, I'm very sorry Colonel Langton isn't here to greet you, sir. He, um, he was called away to a civil defense meeting, sir. Hmm. Would you, would you care to inspect the guard, sir? Yes. Guard present and ready for your inspection, sir! Thank you. Pretty fair turnout. Thank you, sir. I suppose you know what this is all about. No, sir, I don't. You surprise me, Sarders. I thought the grapevine was infallible. <laughs> Nothing stirs up the war of this like a question in the house. Some Bolshe exercising his divine right. Who is he? Any idea? I'm afraid I don't quite follow, sir. Some barrack room lawyer wrote to his MP. Menu wasn't up to his liking or some such cock, so it fell on my neck. Would you, uh, would you care for a little refreshment first, sir? I'm sure you need it after that, that long drive. No, let's get on with it. Don't want you tarted up the cookhouse before I've seen it. Go right in. You, um, you haven't got a ladder we can borrow, have you? Ladder? Yeah, you know, think you'll climb up. There's a fault on one of your lines. We'll have to check your junction box. Haven't you got a ladder of your own? Yeah, we got one of our own in the truck about half a mile down. Come on, we won't hurt it. Better ask in the guard room. Sorry to trouble you, Sergeant. Phone trouble in the area. Oh, have you come about this fault? I mean, that's a change. You haven't reported it yet. You've got one, too. Yeah, all the lines are dead. Yeah, that Bert, they've got a fault here, too. Ah, oh, sure, that's great. 
Well, what do you think? Shall we leave the other one? Well, after, shall we? I mean, this is priority. You haven't got a ladder, have you? Yes, we've got one out the back. Go and get it. Probably in them woods over there. All that rain last night, mine's down everywhere. Well, shall we take a look? May as well. Thanks. I'll keep out of the way, then. We've got some top brass visiting. Don't worry us, mate. We've done our bit. That's on top! Right, carry on. We, um, we try to vary the food, sir, as much as possible. Mm. Stuff on halt. At ease, stuff sergeant. Let me see your menu cards for the week. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Cook, try to get one of those on a plate. Sample that, Philip. Fork. 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 What's this supposed to be? Well, it's, um, it's a sort of a, a, well, it's kind of a vegetable soup, I think, sir. Plate. Your turn, Peter. Spoon. 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 Carry on eating. Any um, complaints here? Come along now. Answer the brigadier up. No, sir. You're um, quite satisfied with the food. You can speak quite freely. Well, uh, no, sir. Not always, sir. What exactly don't you like about it? Well, uh, I sometimes give you good grub, sir, but uh, I mess it about like. How do you mean, mess it about? Well, take Sunday, sir. 
I mean, uh, we had a fair whack of the old roast and that, and uh, gravy and stuff, but, uh, well, they messed it about, like, you know. Specifically? Beg your pardon, sir? What did they do to it? Oh, oh well, I mean, I'm not a cook, am I? Uh, I mean, I only go by what I taste like, and, uh, well, it didn't taste right, see? It sort of tasted like they messed it about, like. What's this man's name? Grogan, sir. Uh, Grogan, sir. That's all, is it? Well, that was only last Sunday, sir. What about today's meal? Oh, well, uh, very fair, sir. You know, if you like eggs. I mean, they're not great favourites of mine, but, uh, well, you've got to eat them to sort of keep your strength up, like. Yes. Oh, bleeding ass me, didn't he? Oh. Afternoon, sir. Having trouble? All clear? I'm not sure. Something stuck in the feed pipe, I reckon. Oh, yes. Well, it's very kind of you to stop anyway. Not at all, sir. It's a pleasure. Ever thought of becoming a member, sir? Oh, I don't think so. They belong to too many things already. <laughs> We've got to get back. Give them another minute, then do what's necessary. Come on. I shall have to send in a full report, of course. Yes, sir. Would you care to come to the mess now? I'm afraid I haven't time to be social. Thank you very much, sir. Oh, for all of us, these things. Give my regards to Colonel Langton. Sorry to have missed him. Yes, sir. He'll be sorry too, sir. Can you see them? It's just coming up now, sir. Right, let's go. Ought to be okay now. Oh, well, thank you very much. Not at all. We didn't find anything, so we'll have to report it again when we get back, and they'll be down first thing. Well, thanks for the ladder anyway, right, Bert? Goodbye, Sergeant. Oh, Bert! What's this big ladder doing here? Down, 
Any complaints? No, no sir. sir. Right. Carry on smoking. Got a hand it to the dear Colonel. They bought it just like he said. Yes, uh, nothing in the stop press. No, just liquor on grave charge. I, I thought you took a long time over the shop in Padre. You know, I think that's really in rather poor taste. Bloody, bloody damn. Well, shut up anyway. Oh, a bit touchy tonight, aren't we? A small wonder after the meal you just cooked. Well, it's your turn to bend over a hot stove tomorrow. You didn't take offence, did you, Padre? Something I've been meaning to ask you. I've always been interested in this religious uh, aspect. Those sort of uh, get-togethers like Billy Graham. You ever been to one? Yes. As a matter of fact, I have. Hey. That's interesting. I mean, you uh, you went forward and that got the call. I have. I always went forward. Uh, thank you. I've read it. Any complaints, gentlemen? No, sir. I must say I take my hat off to you. Congratulations. Thank you, Rupert. No, thank you, gentlemen. Well, that's the end of phase one. Now for phase two. We are going into the removal business. I have the premises, but not the vehicles. But I'm sure the adjutant will take care of that small detail before the night is out. Well, come on, Martin. Mad about the new fashion. Well, it's time we got the show on the road, too. There's a lot to be done tonight. The night watchman will be out any moment now. They get a drink before the pub closes. What's your game? Sorry, mate. Looking for the same thing myself. Get lost. Don't you believe in lights? I beg your pardon? Lights. Yes, I'm so sorry, officer. A vehicle's come out of there, you know. Yes, I'm so sorry. Well, watch it next time.
This is the view of the bank that you will see three weeks from today, gentlemen. Just before the armored car arrives, a commissionaire opens the side entrance to the bank. The armored car always arrives at 10.55. As soon as it stops, one guard gets out of the cabin and goes to the rear of the vehicle. At a signal from him, the door is opened from the inside and he's joined by two other guards. All these three men are armed. The money you see being handled so calmly often amounts to over a million pounds. It doesn't seem possible, does it? I mean, I would have thought a million would look much more than that. I assure you it is. Each of those boxes contains 50,000 pounds in used notes. Take a good look, gentlemen, because it's all there. Operation Golden Fleece. This is the battlefield on which we shall fight. And here, I promise you, we shall enjoy our finest hour. What price, Glory? A hundred thousand pounds each, tax-free. You won't have to sign a single form for it. You won't even have to salute. The entire operation takes exactly three minutes. The money is now being wheeled into the side entrance of the bank, and the armored car leaves. We wait until it turns this corner. At that point, we go into action. Light. The money is now being wheeled down this corridor to the lift and then to the vaults. Question? Yes, sir, I, I must be a bit confused. I'm sorry, but why do we wait till the money's inside the bank? I mean, surely... Because to try to take it outside would be fatal as well as messy. The driver of the armored car is completely sealed in, safe from attack, and in constant touch with both the police and his own company. Uh, what do you do about the alarm system there? I do nothing. I leave that to you. Actually, there are two alarm systems in the bank, one to their security company and one to the nearest police station. There are at least a dozen push buttons in the building. If one of them is pressed, signals go out, steel shutters come down and block every exit, and at the same time, an alarm starts ringing on the roof. And what do I do about that? You will prevent it from happening. As our explosives expert, you will manufacture bombs, which, when dropped into this manhole here, and this one here will knock out the telephone and electricity systems of the entire area. Meanwhile, Mr. Lexi, our radio expert, will be jamming all police broadcasts over a radius, I hope, of at least two miles. At the same time, Major Rutland Smith will provide us with a noxious and blinding smoke screen. This will not affect us because we shall be wearing gas masks so generously provided by the army. Thus, when we move in, we move against a target that is both surprised and defenseless. It's a nutcase, you know. No getting away from it. You'll end up with a knighthood. One, two, three. Come on, get a spurt on. I want this place cleared by 12. Oh, good morning, officer. Can I help you? Good morning, sir. I didn't know this place was being used again. Oh, no, I've just taken it on temporarily until my permanent premises are ready. Oh, I'll keep an eye on it, sir. Now I know you're here. Oh, I wish you would. That's very kind of you. Oh, just routine, sir. Good day. Good day, officer.
Could he have seen anything? No. Well, there she is. How's that for service? Where did you get it? Harrods, charged to your account. Do you mean you stole it in broad daylight? Well, if you want to put it that crudely, yes. You bloody idiot. We had a policeman here not two minutes ago. So? So what if he saw you turn in here and took the number? Well, no one knows the car's been stolen yet. So why bother about the number? I gave explicit orders the job was not to be attempted until after dark. All right, well, court martial me, old darling. Thank you. That'll cost you a hundred. Well, make it five hundred. I'm easy. Now, I'm in charge of transport, right? Well, I decided it was better to have this car here today. We may have to do some work on it. What sort of work? How do I know till I've looked? Or would you rather find out on the day? I'll accept the fact that your motives were good, but that's the last time you disobey orders. We can't afford to waste all the work we're doing just because one man wants to be a hero. I've nothing against heroes, except they're usually crooked for other people. Get in under cover. All right, Stevens, get it in, will you? Yeah, oh, Padre, uh, get some number plates made up. Private car, London area, 1960. Right. Well done, Padre. Excellent. Well, gentlemen, that more or less wraps it up. Oh, I think the adjutant would like one word with you. Uh, yes, I want the drivers to report to me immediately after this briefing that all petrol tanks and spare jetty cans are full and that oil levels and tire pressures are correct. And then I'll carry out a final engine inspection. That's all, Colonel. <coughs> sir. Yes, Quartermaster. Just about the leave arrangement, sir. You asked me to mention the suitcases. Oh, yes. Yes, the quartermaster has provided an extra suitcase apiece to allow for your excess baggage after the operation. <laughs> I take it you've all read the movement order for tomorrow night. <clears throat> I've laid on a little celebration. It'll be our last get-together, as I don't anticipate any future regimental reunions. And throughout the evening, all officers, as per the movement order, will be going off on a well-earned leave to sunnier climb. <laughs> Wacko! <clears throat> oh, yes, Rupert? Oh, I'm so sorry. I quite forgot. Uh, please. <clears throat> the latest Amnesty weather forecast for tomorrow, Friday the 18th. Uh, most of England, cloudy with occasional rain or showers with some bright periods. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Further outlook, very promising. Thank you, Rupert. You read that very nicely. Well, gentlemen, it just remains for me to thank you for all your hard work, enthusiasm, and unfailing loyalty. Everything's prepared. We've left nothing to chance. Our last reconnaissance photographs reveal no changes. And I know that we shall be amply rewarded for all our efforts. It's all there, waiting for us tomorrow morning. So relax, get a good night's sleep, and good luck. Damned. Come in. Have a drink. Mm. 
Pull up a chair. Couldn't sleep. It was the waiting that always killed me in the war. Killed everyone. Always surprises you. It's like love. Every time you think it's going to be different. But it's always the same. It's the sameness that surprises you. I, uh, I won't ask you in because Mother's waiting up. Got it straight now, haven't you? Midnight tomorrow, London Airport. Drive carefully. I was just trying to relax, as per your instructions, sir. Well, I don't know what action I shall take yet. But at the very least, it'll be a heavy fine. Yes, sir. Thanks, sir. Alexei. Yes, sir. How much would you say she was worth? Oh, I'd settle for the full 500, sir.
Excuse me, sir. Can you give me a light? Information is restricted. Uh, well, oh, au revoir. And you too, sir. I won't drop you a line. Uh, no, don't. But I'll be thinking of you. Weaver? Oh, no. Don't do anything too explosive. Well, definitely not, sir. I'll use a very s -s slow fuse. <laughs> well, goodbye, everybody. Have a good time. Goodbye. Oh, oh, yeah. yes, Bye. Yes, have a good time. Uh, uh, you know, I suddenly feel rather sad. <laughs> Philip McMaster, Padre. Certainly, Peter. Poor old Padre. He's going to feel a pinch. Oh, you know. really? Why? Well, now you can afford to sin. Takes the edge off it. Your only hope is to hop gospel it to California and found your own church. Start a new movement. <laughs> <laughs> You're very busy deciding anybody else's future, Lexi. What do you intend to do? Well, after I've settled all the outstanding maintenance orders, look, I'm not kidding. I was a fair operator without money. Now I'm loaded. I'll have to beat them off with clubs. Well, you don't belong to any. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Padre. Well, Rupert, you're going off now. Hmm? Yes, my time has come, as I say. Well, journey's in. 
I hope the rest of the quotation comes true. I doubt it. I'm the exception to the rule. I always make the same mistake twice. You know, don't bother to see me. I'd say, hey, goodbyes. Well, thanks for everything. I can't tell you how much I... I'm going to spend it, too. Awfully decent type, that, you know. Oh, Rupert. Oh, one of the best. Mm. Solid as a rock. Uh, the party seems to be dying a bit. We can't have that. Um, Martin, put on another record. Uh, Padre, do the honors. Right. Sir. Here we are with one over here. Is, um, is this all you've got, sir? What's wrong? Nothing there? Well, it's not exactly the hip parade. Still, uh, let's try this one. <laughs> Say you forgot me, old scoundrel. Warren. Bunny Warren. Bunny. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was going to say, I haven't changed all that much, have I? Oh, no, no. <laughs> it was just that I couldn't uh, see who it was oh. at first. Well, how are you? Oh, can't complain, old son. Can't complain. My God, you haven't ordered a scrap. Oh. What? <laughs> Kick it with a shock to me. Well, I thought it would. Well, I finally found you in. Now, look here. Guess what? We're neighbors. Neighbors? Yes. I moved in last week. Wellington Avenue. I couldn't believe my luck when I got your address from the association. I called a couple of times with no reply. No, I've been a bit busy. <laughs> <laughs> How are things, eh? Everything tickety snitch? <laughs> I, uh, I thought I heard a bit of a party going on. Oh, just a few business friends. <laughs> ah. Well, come and... Join us. Oh, well, you know me. Uh, we ought to buy now. <laughs> Never say no to a party. <laughs> By golly, those are the days, eh? <laughs> oh, what about Vienna? Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on oh, in. Thanks. <laughs> Evening. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'd like you to meet an old friend of mine, Brigadier Bunny Warren. Uh, yeah. I uh, <laughs> had the honor to serve under him in 30 Corps. <laughs> well, what will you drink? Oh, you know, to buy uh, the scotch? Yes. Mm. Uh, Bunny was telling me that he's just become a neighbor of mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's bloody funny how the old water flows under the... Uh, under the, the uh, I, I, I haven't seen Norman for... Oh, how, how long is it, Norman? Oh, it must be 1948. Well, it must be. It, it must be all of that. Go on. <laughs> yes. uh, tell me, what are you chaps celebrating, eh? Well, I don't know how you describe it, really. Um, how would you describe it, uh, Norman? Oh, oh, oh cheers. Oh, oh, thanks so much. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Uh, uh, describe what? Well, I was just wondering what the party was made of. <laughs> Mind you, never needed any excuse myself. <laughs> oh, I say, Norman. Do you remember that Christmas at Hamburg? Oh, oh that was one for the book, eh? <laughs> That'll go down in history, that one. <laughs> yes, well, if you excuse me, Norman, I think I'd better be buzzing. Oh, must you be going? Yes, must be too late tonight. <laughs> well, very nice to meet you. Yes, you too. See you again, I hope. I hope so, yes. Well, thank you once again for a lovely party, Norman. I enjoyed every moment of it. I'll get your coat. Yes, I'll just say goodbye. Uh, well, goodbye, Padre. Uh, I mean, uh, well, goodbye, everybody. Look after yourselves. Now, um... I have something with me. What was oh, it? A dog with it? Uh, no, a, a suitcase. Oh, that's oh, so sorry. Yes, thank you. Right. Good cheer. Well, um, bye once again. <laughs> well, cheerio. Bye. 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 <laughs> yes, you know, that, uh, that party I was talking about, uh, it was in Hamburg, and I... Oh, Hamburg, really? Mm. Oh, let me top you up. Oh, <laughs> it's jolly nice of you. <laughs> Hello, dead soldier. <laughs> Seen plenty of those in my time. <laughs> How will you... Uh... Get rid of him. Oh, don't worry. I'll find a way. I know Bunny's capacity to the last ounce. By tomorrow morning, this will be but a part of a monumental hangover. Good luck. Thank you, sir, for changing my way of life. 
He was in the sergeant's mess, as a matter of fact. Old Wilson said he was going to do some conjuring tricks. Was he any good? <laughs> no, no, that was the point. No, he was no bloody good at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, he could do the usual things, you know, card tricks and all that sort of stuff. But then, then he announced that he was going to attempt something very elaborate. Uh, how's your drink, Bunny? <laughs> oh, right, the moment, thanks. I was, I was just telling him about old Wilson. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, anyway, he, he got something to get him a tray and a bottle of Steinhager. You remember that uh, German gin? <laughs> More or less U-boat fuel. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, he stood in the tray and he, and he poured the stuff all over him. <laughs> oh, sacrilege. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, that was it. That, that was it. <laughs> then he said light to himself. <laughs> <laughs> he went up like a rocket. <laughs> of course, mind you, we all pitched in. You know, chaps sort of threw water and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> but you know, the damned inflammable stuff that's dying. <laughs> yes, poor devil. He, he was a death door for three months. You know, really. He never turned a hair. Never turned a hair. <laughs> all he said was, uh, well, at least I know that trick doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, thank you. Norman, I think perhaps. Uh, yes, um, Norman, mustn't keep the little darling, uh, the little woman. Waiting. Oh, must you go? We've both had rather a full day. Say nothing of a full night coming up. <laughs> Hello, what's that in aid of? Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh! Off for a dirty weekend, eh? <laughs> no, no, just a well-earned rest. Uh, you speak for yourself. I'm off for a dirty year, if I live that long. Well, cheerio, Bunny. Take uh, care of that lovely red neck. I'm awfully <laughs> glad you've moved in round here. Very select little neighbourhood. I know Norman's pleased, aren't you, Norman? It made my day. <laughs> oh, so long, Madge. Oh, oh, goodbye. See you in the headlines. <laughs> Keep up the good work, Padre. Oh, I will. There are very few of us left, you know. <laughs> so long, all. Lovely party, Norman, old darling. I'll see you out. <laughs> Did I hear you call him Padre? Oh, it's just a nickname, Bunny. He used to be a missionary of sorts. Allow <laughs> me. Oh, thank you. Hello, Bunny. Oh, Had you better answer that? Yes, I suppose I should have. Hello? John George Norman Hyde. This is Superintendent Wheatlock here. Sorry, wrong number. It was the wrong number. Oh, oh, oh whatever. Oh, I've, had, I've been playing with that wrong number thing for a year. I never forget when I was uh, in Ale Ale uh, Alex, um, Ale Alexander. You know, I had one of these machines, this telephone, where they went, you, you know, they were thinking, Bloop. Uh, uh, Bunny, you just help yourself, will you? Oh! Yeah, I'll be back in a minute. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. No. That was the police. Police? On the telephone. What did they want? Well, they asked for you. Yeah, I rang off. Well, let's take a look around. You try the back, I'll go upstairs. <laughs> Thank you, Bunny. Here you are. What's this for? Oh, no, no, no. You misunderstood me. I, I mean, this fellow. Uh, we. Uh... If you think I'm getting without you, you're very much mistaken. I don't argue. This way, one of us has still got a chance. I'll stall them off as long as I can. At any rate, you'll get a head start. Oh, come on, this isn't the time to do a bow chest. Well, I'm not going on your telephone, you're over Just a minute. Oh, yeah. For the last time, Peter, will you get the hell out of here? That's an order. No. The rules don't apply anymore. Major Race, I said that's an order. Oh. 
All right, Colonel. If that's the way you want it. Give them their money as well as the trial, and then flog your memoirs to the Sunday papers. That's always an angle. That way. Look here, Norman. I mean, it's none of my business. I mean, you've got this fresh first. Yes, all right, Danny, I'll answer it now. Yes. Yes, this is Colonel Hyde speaking. Thank you. I am aware of that. There's just one thing I'd like to know. Who betrayed us? No one betrayed you. Just his name. That's all I want to know. Purely for the record. I'm telling you, nobody did any betraying. I can't accept that. All right, Colonel, for what it's worth, the name of the person who led us to you is Billy Miles. I don't know anybody of that name. Billy Miles is the eight-year-old son of a caretaker who lives in East Cheap adjoining the bank. He collects car numbers. And he happened to spot the number plates on the furniture van. M-O-W-872. And that's a Southampton registration for private cars. It's all very interesting. But what is it supposed to prove? On its own, nothing. But do you remember a young copper at your warehouse? Well, he was pretty green. He didn't know as much about number plates as the kid. But he did know enough to make a note of the van's number and the number of your own car standing in the yard. That's your traitor, Colonel. Your own car. Now, look, sir. I'm afraid if you don't come down here within five minutes, we shall have to come up to the house. That won't be necessary. I'll come to you. Yeah, anything wrong, Norman? Can I, can I help? Nobody. It's a long story. And you're going to bore people to death with it. Well, if you're ready, I'll walk you a part of the way home. Well, I, I really understand. I've read just arrived. Uh, what's up, Norman? Is the party over? Yes, buddy, the party's over. The drink. And the luck ran out. It looks, Bunny, as if you'll have to make a night of it. All present and correct, sir. At ease, gentlemen. Somewhere, are we? Norman? 